In the prior lesson, we discussed some key terms. Now it's time to take a few minutes to understand basic navigation in Teams. This lesson will help you quickly find the tools that you need so that you can get your tasks done. I would like to draw your attention back to the vertical navigation menu on the left side of the screen. The top app is called Activity, represented by the bell icon. You will see a number over the bell when you have new notifications. This could be tied to new messages, chats, approval notices, etc. When I click on the bell, notice that the unread messages are bold to quickly draw your eye to the content you have not interacted with yet. The first message automatically opens and that will count as read. There are two filters at the top of the navigation pane, unread or at mentions. The at mentions are messages where you have been tagged by name to let you know that the writer wants your attention on that message. To remove the filter, just click at mentions again and you will see the full list. At the top of the navigation pane, there are two icons, a filter icon and three dots for more options. If you wanna search by a specific word, click on the filter icon and then type whatever your key term is into the box that appears. I'm going to click the X on the right side of the navigation pane so that we can now click on the three dots for more options. This is where you will find the options to mark all of your messages as read, and you will find a quick link to get to notification settings. In typical Microsoft fashion, there are multiple ways to get to settings. These are called entry points. This entry point would take you specifically to notifications. For now, we're just covering basic navigation. We'll look at settings in more detail in the next lesson. The next app on the vertical navigation menu is chat. This is where you find private messages between you and one or more people you specify. Most people think of this as the instant messaging part of Teams. By default, you will see a you message pinned to the top of the navigation pane where you can post notes that only you will see. Chats will be organized with the most recent message up top. If you've not received a chat from someone in a while, it will fall further down the list. If you wanna keep track of a specific chat, you can pin it to the top. For example, I pin chats from coworkers so that all the meeting chats don't push them so far down the list that I cannot find them. At the top of the navigation pane, you have the new chat, filter, and more option buttons. Let's look at the filter option because it has more choices than the activity filter did. The default is to search by name, but if you click the additional filters icon, there are options to see unread, chats, meetings, and muted. You might be thinking, why is chat specified when we're already in the chat app? Well, this is creating a distinction between chats that you have with specific people and chats that are tied to a meeting. I am going to clear the filters and select the chat with Nestor so that we can draw our attention to the right side of the screen where you will find additional chat options. If you want to start a Teams call within a chat, you will click on the phone icon. To add more people to your chat, select the group chat icon. As always, the three dots indicates a hidden menu with more options. Let's go back to the left-hand side of the screen to look at some Teams options. Here in the navigation pane, you will see all of the teams that you belong to. When you join a new team, it will automatically appear at the bottom of the list, but you can drag and drop your teams into any order that makes sense to you. At the top of the navigation pane, you will find the plus icon where you can create channels, teams, or join a team. Using the filter icon, you can search for teams by the name of the team or a name of a specific channel. Like the activity bell, you have the option to search for messages by unread messages or at mentions. You also have the three dots to mark all of your messages as unread and 
find your settings for your teams and channels. Now let's go to the calendar options. This is where you will go to see what meetings or appointments you have on your calendar. This does have a two-way synchronization between Teams and Outlook, so no matter where you create the event, it would be on both calendars. If you want to switch to a different date range, you will click the drop-down next to the month and year, and you can scroll through the calendar, or you can use these arrow buttons to jump from week to week. On the right-hand side of the screen, you can decide how you want to view your calendar, one day at a time, the work week, a full week, or an agenda view. This is something that's a little bit different than Outlook. In Outlook, you can view a whole month. That is not possible in Teams. Now, if you wanna create a new meeting, here on the right-hand side of the screen, you would click the purple New Meeting button. This will start a standard meeting. If you click the drop down, you will see additional options. Now what you see in your teams may be different than what I'm displaying based on what your company allows. The meet now option lets you quickly create a meeting in the moment. These are often called ad hoc meetings. The last basic navigation option we have here on the calendar is to join a meeting with an ID. Normally, this happens when somebody from outside of your organization invites you to something and they have a join ID that you should use to access their version of Teams. We're going to go back to the left-hand navigation menu and we're going to skip over these few options here because these are customizations that I made to the navigation menu and we'll get to that in a few moments. The calls, however, is part of the basic navigation. Now you might see two things here. With a basic Teams license, everybody is going to see a history of calls that people made from within Teams, such as Nestor calling me from a chat that we were having. You can filter through your call history using the options here at the top of the screen. On the right-hand side of the screen, there is a place to create a speed dial for your most frequently used contacts. On the right-hand side of the screen, you may see a dial pad in the navigation pane. If you see that, that means that your company has paid an additional fee to give you a phone number associated with your Teams account. That phone number can be used from a landline or a cell phone. The person calling does not need to have a Teams account. Towards the bottom of the left-hand side of the screen, you have some menu options to decide whether or not you allow calls to be forwarded and some additional settings, as well as some settings associated with your audio devices. The last thing I would like to point out on the left-hand navigation menu is the three dots for more apps and the button for apps. They are similar, but they don't do the exact same thing. With the three dots, it's going to pull up a list of applications. You can decide if you want one of these applications to be in your left-hand navigation menu. So let's pretend I want to quickly find Whiteboard. When I select that, notice that it adds it to my left-hand navigation menu, but it's only there temporarily. If I want it to be there permanently, I can right-click and select Pin. If I no longer want a specific app, I can right click it and select unpin. If you click the apps button, this is going to take you to a list of apps that are available within Teams. Now what you see on this screen is going to be dependent on what your company allows. But to demonstrate what you can find, I'm just going to select popular in Teams from the navigation pane. And notice we have a few options like Microsoft Forms. When you select an application, a pop-up box will appear giving you a few details about the app. When I click on the drop-down arrow next to the word open, you can see that this one you can use by adding it to a team, a chat, or a meeting. What it doesn't do is add it to my left-hand navigation menu.
It's important to know that the choices are different depending on the application you choose. So I encourage you to go through the apps that are available to you and see how they fit into your workflow. The last thing I want to point out is the three dots on the upper right hand side of the screen for settings and more that is next to your picture known as your presence icon. This is the entry point that we will use in the next lesson to discuss the various settings available in Microsoft Teams.